Inktober, done. This was my first year not only drawing every single day for Inktober, but also posting for 31 days straight to YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. My goals at the start of the challenge were one, complete all 31 days and ideally on time. Two, was to improve my art by focusing on storytelling and compositions, cleaning up my line work and increasing my hatching skills, as well as trying out new techniques with ink. And lastly, my third goal was to post to Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok every single day. In order to be successful, I knew I needed to prep well ahead of time. The prompt list actually got released on September 1st, but I committed to doing the challenge on September 20th, so I only had about 10 days to come up with references and ideas for each prompt. I wanted to be excited about drawing each day and having a clear plan and references definitely helped with that. I didn't want to come home from work, you know, have an empty brain, empty canvas. I don't know what to do because that means I would not get anything done or things would just take me a really long time. So prepping well with good references was super, super important for me. So if you're hoping to do Inktober or a similar challenge in the future, I would highly, highly recommend not to skip the planning step. I think I would have been very lost without getting all my references done ahead of time and I probably would not have finished the challenge. I kept notes about how I was feeling and progressing through the challenge, so let's dive into week one. To start, I did two drawings on the very first day just so I could get ahead of the content making schedule. I also wanted to shoot most of my content with natural light, so working during the middle of the day was the plan, at least on the weekends. Similar as for the 100 heads challenge, I drew a box around my working area since this helps me proportion out my drawings and I think it looks nice for the sketchbook as a whole. I also really was trying to be creative with the prompts and make work I was proud of, and a lot of my inspiration came from fantasy book drawings like The Hobbit. In terms of time management and logistics, I felt pretty good the first week. I was getting everything done, I was making work I was happy with, and everything was pretty smooth sailing at this point. My favorite pieces from this week were their spiders or map, and with spiders, uh, obviously, this took inspiration from The Hobbit, but I kind of made it my own in terms of what I thought that the movie kind of looked like because I was actually looking directly for this scene, like a screen grab from the movies for this shot, and I didn't find one. So this was kind of my own interpretation of Bilbo walking through the forest of spiders. As for map, which was number five, I thought this one was just kind of funny because our favorite kitty ended up in Australia when he wanted to go to Austria, you know, common travel mistake. So I just thought it was kind of funny to be able to tell, you know, just like a one piece drawing and it kind of tells a whole story. For social media, I posted a finished photo on my art insta in the morning and the reel in the afternoon. For TikTok and YouTube, I kind of posted whenever I had time. Um, Inktober isn't quite as big on those platforms, so I didn't really care as much about getting my work done early in the day. I didn't really have any expectations coming into the socials. I just kind of wanted to challenge myself to be able to post something every single day because consistency is definitely something I struggled with in the past. I'd post like maybe, you know, twice a week for like a couple of weeks at a time and then just just goes to all social platforms for like three or four weeks at a time. So I wanted to post every day and see if the algorithm rewarded me with any kind of growth for that. I did not see that much growth in week one. However, it was really interesting for me to observe which platform picked up which video because the only thing that really changed was the music and even that was pretty consistent most of the time. I usually select the music on Instagram or TikTok and then use the same song for YouTube since <laughs> their music selection tool is not that great. So everything was pretty similar for each video so it was interesting to see which platform picked up which video. So here are my stats from week one for Instagram. I posted a still piece in the morning and a reel in the afternoon every single day to my art account. I then added the reel to my story and then Inktober had this little story sticker thing for each day. So I would just add a picture to my story using the story sticker for each day and that actually brought a lot of eyes to my story. I gained a net of five followers and my reach was higher than previous weeks. However, I knew that this would not last that long since the highest engagement for Inktober is at the start of the month and then people just kind of start dropping off. But based on engagement and reach, my posts did better than they did in the previous weeks. On YouTube, I'll mostly be focusing on my shorts performance. So I gained a modest four subscribers from shorts and got about 2,300 views in total. 
For TikTok, this isn't the most accurate since I just enabled my analytics like two days beforehand. So I don't think I was tracking everything up to this point but I know that my best performing video got 1800 views on day one. I definitely struggled in the second week of October. I did not film very much, only the bare minimum to get some sort of content out. However, if you wanna see the BTS of what my month looked like, I will link the video of the drawing every day vlog here. I noticed that on the pieces where I did not have a very clear and defined vision for each aspect of the drawing, I struggled with completion. For example, spicy. I did not know what to put in the background. I didn't know what I wanted her to wear. I didn't know what her expression should have looked like. I just had a vague idea and then I was kind of cobbled together some references. I didn't like any of them. It was just a struggle to finish that one. So a tip I would pass on is the less decision making you have to do when you actually sit down at your sketch pad, the better. I think my favorite piece for this week was fortune. Um, I definitely spent more time on the pieces where I really liked the reference photos and I was really excited about this one. And after drawing the references, it made me want to make iterations in watercolor and maybe graphite and other mediums. So I'm really excited to kind of keep working on these ideas that I, you know, started fleshing out during Inktober. And I personally thought this piece was well executed in terms of actually drawing a real person with ink because before it was more like anime type style. So I was pretty proud of how this one turned out. Social media stats for week two. On Instagram, I gained 19 followers and increased my reach and engagement from the previous week. On YouTube, I also gained 19 subscribers and increased my views from shorts. And on TikTok, I finally got some real analytics, which you can see here. I was on the road for all of week three. I was in Washington with some family, so I actually had a little bit more time to draw than usual because I was working West Coast hours on my East Coast job. So I was waking up super, super early, but I had a bunch of daylight to actually get my art done. However, on the days when I was actually doing something like hiking or traveling by car or train, um, that was pretty tough. That was pretty tough to get my art done, but I had designated those times as, you know, drawing times. This is when I have time to work on my Inktober drawings. So. I stuck to it, even if it was pretty bumpy. Um, the content I filmed in this week was not that great. It was pretty minimal. I would just do, you know, sometimes sketch and then transition to the finished piece, just like a four second short. But still, it was getting done. I was getting it out and into the world. So I was proud of that for still sticking to Inktober while I was out and about and not in my usual home setup. And for the entirety of the a whole month, there were only actually two days where I did not actively draw, even if it was for like 15 minutes or something. And that was a hiking day and a concert day where I was just traveling all day before it and then a concert in the evening but I got all my October drawings done ahead of time because I knew that those days would not be great for actually drawing. My favorite drawing for this week was Demon. Um, this one right here. I actually wanted to add like a cool like sinister shadow behind him but it just I just don't think it would have worked in an ink medium. Um, it would have been cool in like a maybe like a water soluble like ink watercolor type of drawing, but I just I just didn't think it would translate that well to this medium, so I opted not to do it. But I really liked how my sketch for that one turned out, so again, I might iterate on this concept and kind of make a little bit more of this of this little demon boy because he's pretty cute. So <laughs> maybe you'll see him around. So stats for week three. I was definitely seeing more growth. On Instagram, I gained 19 followers, and I think a majority of those were from two successful reels, which was the Sailor Moon one and the Dagger one. My reach and engagement also increased from the previous week by just a little bit. On YouTube, I gained 58 subscribers, with a lot of those coming from one short, which was the Chains short. I don't know why, but I put Talking Dirty by Jason Derulo as the song. And the time to the art, like surprisingly well, which is why I think it did that well. However, the funny thing is that the, my line work in that sketch was awful. Like my actual drawing skills were so bad in that sketch, especially as I was progressing through it. I cleaned it up at the end for the finished piece, but I'm just like, why this one? You know, like, why is this the one that actually like got picked up a little bit? Cause I think it got like over 6,000 views, which was much more than uh, my previous ones, except for spicy. TikTok was a little bit better this week as well. 
um, but still pretty mid results. Week four, we're on the home stretch. At this stage, I really tried to minimize how much time I spent on sketching, so I just hopped straight into the inking process. I got back to New York on the night of the 23rd, so I was super excited to be back in my home setup, but that meant I was drawing at night again because I had to work from the office during the day, which is fine, but that means my lighting and my tiredness <laughs> uh, did not play well into actually finishing each drawing, but I persevered. I'm very, very stubborn. So I got all my drawings done, even if I was really tired. My favorites from days 22 to 31 were Celestial, Sparkle, and Fire. For Celestial, I love how this one turned out like a tarot card. That was the original intention all along. Um, I'd love to make another iteration of this one, maybe in watercolor, make a whole set of these just because I think it's super, super cool concept and maybe adding like metallic gold and silver paints. I'm excited to be done with Inktober so I can actually flesh out some of these ideas. And a sparkle, that was cool because that was my first time drawing a diamond. And this one actually reminds me of a playing card, which I thought also was pretty cool. And as for the last one, that was fire. And I knew what I wanted to do for that prompt. Um, like as soon as I saw the prompt list and I committed to doing Inktober and that was a dragon. I wanted to make like an Aragon style book cover of a dragon with fire breathing out of her mouth. And I'm really happy with how this one turned out. I thought that the details were really cool and I really tried to spend a lot of time on it to make sure it did look good. And the detail work would have been even more fun if I had more than one day to work on it, but that's fine. A little hand cramping. It's you know, it's part of, part of the job. <laughs> uh, but I really thought it was a nice conclusion and really worked on a lot of the skills I was trying to improve during this Inktober challenge. And drum roll please for the final stats. For the entire month on Instagram, I gained a total of 57 followers. I reached over 12,000 accounts and over 1,700 accounts engaged with me with a majority of that coming from Reels. I was looking for takeaways, but I, I couldn't really find a lot of patterns into what Instagram thought did well and what Instagram didn't. A lot of the clips were under 10 seconds, some were over 10 seconds, and they didn't perform any differently from each other. All of them had trending audio, so maybe I just need more data points to really come up with a conclusion for this. I also experimented slightly with putting a little introduction video of me at the start of each clip for days nine to 16, but I don't think those did any better or worse. Um, <laughs> so I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it actually worked well or not. For YouTube, here are my final stats. I gained 99 subs, which is great. The algorithm is weird on YouTube since some of my shorts got like only 20 views, but they had over 100% watch time. I don't know, <laughs> like YouTube, what are you doing? I don't know what the algorithm is doing there. So I guess it's just a numbers game. And for me, the biggest surprise came from TikTok in how disappointing it was. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, maybe I was doing something wrong, but I was stuck around 200 to like 250 views for every single video except for the first one for the entire month. I used the same music, I used the same trending audio, and I was posting the exact same videos. And the biggest reason why TikTok was disappointing is because everyone talks about how easy it is to grow on TikTok. So again, I don't know if I was doing something wrong, but let me know if you have any tips. I did manage to complete all of my goals, which is great. I'm very proud of myself for actually completing the challenge for drawing every single day and posting. I said I was gonna do it and I did it. Love that for me. I did feel like I improved a lot of my art, like my line work and my shading techniques. I do wish I would have gone a little bit more out of the box for some of my drawings, but it's hard not to compare yourself to the professional artists and illustrators who do this for a living. Like this is their bread and butter. But on the other hand, I definitely could have pushed my creativity a little bit more. And that's maybe something I would work on in the next iteration if I do end up doing Inktober again, but just how things are laid on the page and what they did for their own prompts as well. So the spark notes of the tips I would give if I were to do Inktober again. Number one, plan, plan, plan. Sketch the ideas if you can. I think that's the one thing I didn't do this year and make sure I'm really set on my references, like including for backgrounds, you know, for clothing, for any sort of prop. So just plan as much as possible. Number two, 
make sure you have the right materials for the look that you are going for. I bought a micron size 2 pen for the first time and that was a game changer in how much area I was able to shade in and actually get you know some sort of negative space and a lot more contrast in my work. So that was just a really big deal for me to have a lot of different types of pens, a lot of pen sizes to be able to do the work I wanted to do. Number three, which is similar to the first one, is find good references. Find something you're excited about, find something that you're really looking forward to drawing because otherwise the month is long and if you're not excited about drawing your prompt, you're probably not gonna do it. And lastly, tip number four, is don't compare your work to others. Like I said before, a lot of these folks are professional artists or illustrators versus a lot of other people who might just do this as a hobby or you know are trying to get back into drawing or are beginners. So don't compare yourself to others. You are running your own race and you are working on your own self and trying to improve your own art. Overall, I don't know if I would do this challenge again. I did like having a decision of, am I gonna draw each day getting taken out of the equation? Because the answer was yes, you are gonna draw each day. But I don't know if it's worth like the hype unless this type of you know ink work is your bread and butter or you're trying to improve your ink skills. And there you have it. Hope you enjoyed my Inktober breakdown and my social media channel breakdown as well. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.